Good afternoon. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late. Um, sitting here playing and time got away with me. So uh, welcome to my Facebook Live today. My name is Michelle Dutrissa and I'm an independent demonstrator in New South Wales, Australia. So, um, and if you have any questions, uh, please post them and I will try to answer them for you the best I can. Now let me flip this camera over. My table is a real mess, but then that's how I run. So um, let's get some stamping. So uh, let me flip it. Might be a moment. Okay, the products we're going to be using today. Now today is my first time playing with this, and I think this is why I have, I'm running a bit late because I was having so much fun playing with it. Um, this is from the mini catalogue that we have running at the moment, and it's New Horizons beautiful beautiful um papers and let me just show some of these to you so i have already cut some of these down so let me just pull these out and you can have a quick look now they are just gorgeous beautiful like watercolor um papers that you can very easily i mean this one here has already got a scene on there so it's already built for you you just need maybe to add a bit extra if you wanted to or just a sentiment again we've got this one here there's quite a few different ones in this suite and those two and again if we flip these over to the other side now i have left two of them out that i haven't showed you let me just flip all these over see how this works those two didn't get flipped and look at the beautiful wash colors on the back of these as well oh there's one there i should have had the other way around and that was the reverse of that one but isn't that just gorgeous um really uh there are beautiful range of papers to play with i mean yeah look i'm going to have so much fun and as i said i've only just opened this packet of designer series paper up out today and had a look now these are the papers that i've played with today um and that's both sides of that one and then your reverse so this is the card that i've made today because my dad's birthday is coming up at the end of this month so um I tend to forget with my family and forget sending them cards but i thought this year i am going to be organized so this is the card and for this one i used this designer series paper here now it is a six by six paper and what i've done is i've actually cut out here like these are 15 by 15 or six inches by six inches and i've cut out a piece here which is 10 centimeters wide which is what i would normally use on my card fronts so if i grab my card front or oh, let me grab my card and i'll flip that over except for just trimming a little bit off the end if you wanted to do a card front you've got that piece there then i had a strip that was left over and that's what i've used for here so this was actually joined on to here so you could make a card out of this piece and then use that scrap to make a card like this one here so um for my second card i thought i would just change it up a little bit and use this piece here now i wasn't quite sure what was up and what was down but i'm sort of treating this as being like a a water type and a sky up here so um that is the way i've decided to run with this piece of designer series paper and it's got some beautiful dies that come with this as well and stamps so here's your stamp set it's on the horizon and you've got um, some trees and some grass this is like um, planks which um, is quite good and great for using for texture i've used it here on this fence line here just to give me a bit of a timber plank um texture on there you've got your birds as well and a few great sentiments and it also comes with some dies now what i do with my dies i actually go down to the reject shop and this is a um like a learner's plate or pea plate um, which is magnetic and i've just put a strip of tear and tape on the back of it and i've put it inside my box and then all my dies sit on top of that so at the moment there's just that one die there that's missing which we're going to be using 
um, but there's some really great little dies there. There's the one there to cut out the planks. Another one here if you want to add some hills or mountains to your scene. Some little houses. I watched a demonstrator from America the other day and made she was um, replicating a photo from Melbourne with the uh, beach boxes that um, we have along some of our beaches in Melbourne and use those dies there. You've got these little ones here for trees. You've got some extra grass and some other mountains as well But and the two fence lines. So we're going to just use one fence line today. So I will take that out um, and we'll be using the birds and the grass and then the happy birthday I've actually taken from another stamp set and I'm trying to think of the name of it because I don't have it here handy because I've got a class happening tonight and I will be using that stamp set in that class um but I'm sorry I can't remember the name but I'm just using the happy birthday which is just a, a quite a plain sentiment because I didn't want anything too too fancy to go with this um I just really wanted happy birthday and I think these really great make great cards for the men in your life who I sometimes feel get a little bit left out with all these well they do in my family even though I have all boys I tend to make very girly type cards so let's get started and make this card so I'll just remove my catalog here and these bits and pieces don't need that and we'll just keep that there to one side just for our inspiration so what have we got today as far as what products that we need okay I'm using the thick whisper white or sorry thick basic white cardstock for my card base and I've cut that at 10 and a half centimeters by 29.9 and I scored that at 14.9 centimeters I'm then using a piece of just the regular basic white for um, my card front, which is 10 centimeters by 14.4. So if you're in America or someone that uses Imperial, this would just be half a sheet of your letter size cardstock. And then this piece here is um, a quarter sheet, but it's also about uh, probably a quarter of an inch smaller than your card front so if I was going to fold that in half it's a quarter of an inch all the way around on this which is for us is about half a centimetre. I then have that strip so that strip was 5.4 centimetres and I've sort of worked out I've cut some off the top and some off the bottom to what area I wanted to show um, and this piece here is 5.4 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters and then I've cut a backing piece now this is out of the Blackberry Bliss and it's 5.7 by 10.8 and I've used the Blackberry Bliss on this one as well because it has got a little bit of that Blackberry Bliss in this section just here and um, I didn't really want to go for a black and the um, evening evergreen there's not enough green in this to pick that up so um, I just thought that that was going to be a good little piece to mat that and the last piece that I have is just a scrap and my scrap here is around about ten and a half centimeters by seven centimeters okay so we need that to do a little bit of stamping on later on so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our piece of basic white and we're going to grab our designer series paper and I'm just going to put those measurements there so I can just keep a track on those and I'm going to lay this over the top roughly where it's going to be positioned and what we're going to do is we're going to stamp over the top of both of these so we get this with this grass effect here so we get the grass coming out and then we will be using an embossing folder just to give a bit of texture to the back of our card so we're just going to lay that down now if you wanted to you could grab some washi tape or I have got some other tape here I really need to have a clean up I think this weekend because I don't know where I have put it let me just grab a little bit of washi tape here that I've got handy some of the old um, stamping up washing tape and all I want to do is just pop a little bit of this 
just down to hold this in position. Now, I will admit when I did this one here, I did stamp it twice. Um, first on the piece of um, basic white and then I stamped it on my designer series paper. Um, just for the fact that it was a bit of an afterthought of where I was going to position things. But with the fact that this particular stamp is more like a squiggle, you could actually move it if it doesn't doesn't have to meet up exactly. So um, you can do this in two steps if you wish. Now you will may get a little bit of a white line on this side, but by the time we put our mat underneath, hopefully you won't see it. Now the colour I'm using here is soft succulent because I love working with the colours that they've recommended, which are the colours that are inside in our design design series paper anyway. I'm just going to stamp that off just to make sure that that's. You don't want to press this down too hardly, hard. Hardly is not a word. Too hard um, because you don't want ink oozing everywhere. And then what we're just going to do is we're going to just stamp across the bottom here, but not, it's about a centimetre or so above the bottom of our designer series paper. And without rocking, just leave it there for a little bit just to let that colour sink in. And hopefully that has worked just like that. Now I have, as I said before, I have got a little bit of a white line there because we've got a bit of a hump from where we go from the designer series paper down to our basic, um, your basic white. Um, and that will leave, even though it's only less than a millimetre thick, it will leave that little bit of a gap there. But by the time I put the mat underneath it, and I could even move it across a little bit, hopefully you won't even notice that. Now, just remember too, if you have missed this um, Facebook Live, I will be putting this onto my YouTube channel. Oops, and I have just torn my paper. That's the only thing I don't like about washi, pa washi tape. Sometimes if you don't take it off easily enough, it tears it. So I'm going to re-stamp that. And this is what I did earlier today. So I'm going to flip this over. Beauty of using our stamping up paper is you can flip it over and just use the other side I'm just going to run around this though with my bone folder because I find that the trimmer sometimes leaves a edge in my paper and I'm going to re-stamp like I did with my original okay best laid plans sometimes don't work but you know what we could always make it happen in another way. So this is how I did mine originally. I laid this on here, worked out where I wanted it to, to go. And then I'm just going to just lining it up on my grid paper. That's roughly where I want it to be. Slip that one out and stamp down. Now, as I was saying before, because that is squeak, a bit of a squiggly line, it really, let's just get rid of that washi tape. It's caused a bit of trouble today. Don't need it hanging around. There we go. Because of that is a squiggly line, it doesn't matter if that doesn't match up exactly okay you can move that across a little bit but that will work out quite well so there you go there's another way of doing it so let's pop that out of the road now we're going to grab our mat here and we're just going to adhere that onto there now i like to use my multi-purpose glue just the fact that it allows me to slip my designer series paper into the position I want it in. Don't need to put in too much glue and put it away from the edge of your paper because you don't really want it to ooze out along the edges either. If you feel comfortable using your seal or your tear and tape, by all means use that. But I just like this because it just 
has a little bit of slip and I can move that across. So I'm just going to give that a good rub down and make sure that's all adhered. Okay, so that's that. And now we need to emboss the card front. So I'm just going to bring in my large cut and emboss. Now this is fairly big, but I need to use the embossing folder. And the embossing folder I'm using is the Tasteful Texture 3D embossing folder. And I think I've got that right for the first time ever. So I'm just going to pop that inside there. And you just need platform one for this and platform four. So we're going to pop that into there, put platform four on top. Now I'm just going to turn this around so you may not get this in view. And we're going to run this through the embossing machine. You only need to run it through once. Okay, let's take this right out of the road. It's out of our way. Remove those. And there's our texture on our design, our um, basic white there. I always like a little bit of texture. I don't always like to have just a, a plain matte white. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now adhere this onto our basic white piece. And as you can see, that line will just follow out from there. It's just to, to give you a little bit of a continuation of the design. So it's not just all on your designer series paper. So again, I'm just going to use some multi-purpose glue. Now this is placed around about a centimetre away from the top edge and the side edge. And as I said, just running, sort of keeping that line following on. I'm not worrying about the squiggle of the grass too much. Give that a nice rub. Make sure that it's adhered down. And then we can put that to one side. So the next thing, oh, I forgot to stamp something else, which we can do now, and that's our birds. So my sky in this one, I've got a little bit less sky, and in this one here I had a little bit more. So um, we're going to see how we go. Now you do have to look at your bird stamp to work out which is up and which is down because some of these birds have got their wings up and some of these birds have got their wings down. So work out which way you want those to go and they're just going to fly just across the sky like that. And I've just used the um, Tuxedo Memento Black for that because they're in the distance. We can't really see them really clearly so that is just fine in black okay so that's the stamping for that piece now we need to bring in our scrap and i've got the stamp here with the planks and for this one i'm going to use the crumb cake and i'm going to stamp my planks twice because when I pop this die on top, it is actually wider than my stamp, and I want my planks going up and down. I want the grain of the timber going up and down, I probably should say. And I'm just going to stamp this just over on one side, and I'm going to stamp once, ink it up, and just overlap it a little bit, and stamp that twice. 
I'm going to not close it up just yet, but I am going to bring in my mini die cut machine and we're just going to cut these out with this little die here. Let me just grab my correct plates for that. Oh, they're sitting on this side. As I said, I need a big clean up. I have been sewing for, feels like weeks, but it hasn't been. And I have got to clean my sewing room so I can get in and do some more. Sometimes it's a little bit like a never ending story. Every time I'm finished, there's another job to keep going with. Okay, so we're just going to pop this plate on top and just run that through now as i said i wanted to make have the um, fence line going up and down with the timber planks so the grain is going up and down on the on the fence let's take this out of the road All of those and remove the die. Whoops. The last one just pops straight out. This one here, I've got to just use my take a pick tool just to pop that out easily. There we go, there's our fence, and it's a little picket fence, so you've got two little points there. Now that is very white, so I just want to take a little bit of that whiteness out, and that's why I've still got my crumb cake here and I'm just going to use my blending brushes just to add a bit extra color to this fence line now I'm not being overly particular I don't mind if there's a little bit of white space you can make it a little bit darker across the bottom because that would have a bit more shading involved in there it's up really up to you but I just wanted I don't want to hide that stamped timber look but I just wanted to take a little bit of that whiteness off that basic white now what you can do here is just give this a little bit of a curl I was doing it with my fingers you can use your um, bone folder if you want to but I'm just using my pen my hands my fingers just to give that a little bit of a bend and then I'm just going to you grab my dimensionals and a pair of snips and I just want a very thin piece and I found that on the edge of these if I remove this dimensional and pop it over there I've got a very narrow piece just on this edge. It's just on these two side edges. These edges here are zigzag, but I just want a little narrow piece. Just to give a little bit of height in the middle of my fence. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Now, if you've got a pair of tweezers handy, it probably is a lot easier doing this with a pair of tweezers. But that little piece is just the same width as that timber paling right there so then the other thing that I want to do is add some glue multi-purpose glue just on this paling here now you've got to be aware too that if you're putting this in the post like I am it will get flattened a little bit so I mean I wouldn't be too pedantic about having a curve in your fence line but I just wanted to have a little bit of a curve in that I haven't put too much glue on there I grab my card now probably I really should be doing this after I've attached this to my card front but I haven't done that and I'm just going to glue that paling there and then just give Oops, I've got to put, take the backing off that dimensional. Put 
push that down and then just give a little bit of a, a bend in there okay so let's adhere this to the front of our card now i probably would as i said before i probably should have done this before i put that fence on but that's okay so let's just pop a little bit of glue on there and we're going to just adhere this to the front of our card again using that multi-purpose glue just allows me to have a little bit of time to slip this into where I want it to be positioned on my card just like that okay we'll get back to that phone call later on so there we are so there's our little scene and we've got our fence line in front of it we've got our birds in the sky now we need to do our happy birthday so I've got my that little scrap there and I've got my happy birthday sentiment and I'm going to use the Blackberry Bliss ink here just to stamp my happy birthday across there. Now of course you could use whatever sentiment that you want on there. But something quite narrow would be, you know, and something that's not too complicated in font would be quite a good one. And now I'm just going to use my mini guillotine here just to trim this out. Now I do want to keep it as close as possible to my line there. And I probably would could go, cut that one a little bit closer. Now... When I want to trim these down, what I do is I make a little handle by using a post-it note and I attach that on the back and that just gives me something to hold on to because I want to just trim this down just a hair width because it's just that, go that little bit closer to that's better now I'm going to flip that over so I'm putting that handle on the other side and now I'm going to cut the other side out and what I use as my guide is I usually try to find something on my trimmer that I'm using so I either use this curved piece of the plastic to line up against say the top of the letters or the distance away from that you can see there's a metal plate just in here and it's around about probably about half an inch in width so I will sort of judge you know is that looking straight across there and using that um, post-it note just to hold things in place and then holding down that plastic plate that you can trim down and again I just want to trim a bit more off that because I just want to come a little bit closer it's sometimes a lot better to cut the things a little bit too big and then trim off a little bit until you get to the size you want and that's looking great and then you can just remove that and that just makes it so much easier when cutting smaller pieces so i'm just going to cut this here at an angle on that side and cut that straight there now i'm going to add a mini dimensional on the back the end of the happy birthday because remember we've raised this up a little bit here so i've got a little bit of height so i'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on this side here so because that's going to be sitting on top of that fence you don't need much glue just need a bit just to hold it in place Take that backing off. And then we can place this happy birthday over the top. 
just like that now it does sit up a little bit on this side because you do have that that lovely curve there but that um, glue will dry sitting on there and there and hold that in place beautifully so we have one left one thing left to do and that's using these beautiful pebble enamel dots and i'm just going to take my take a pick tool and just add some of these around the bottom just to give like a little bit of grounding to that fence pop one here and I've, that one there i've just sat just over the top of that last um fence post and then we need another one and i'm just going to use one of these ones here and pop another one just in tucked in there oops just wants to sit on top of that gray one just want to tuck that in a little bit just there so there you are very simple card but i think it looks very effective so i hope you've enjoyed that today um, and i hope you can um make one of your own and uh, share it with me so um, you just need to if you want to make a card and share it just post it underneath uh, this video on my Facebook page now let me just flip my camera so um, I can have a little bit of a chat with you and uh, so I hope you've liked that card and I hope that you can join me again next week as we make another card and hopefully next week I'll be um, not so much uh, in a a bit of a run to get online because uh, as i said before i was running a little bit late so um i hope you've enjoyed that now all the products uh, will be listed on my youtube channel i'll also be putting this on my blog so you can find all the products there as well to purchase um, any of these so um please remember if you're here in australia you can purchase these from me if you don't have a copy of the mini catalog i still do have some copies and the celebration catalog and they have extended the celebration catalog i can't remember what date till at the moment but for us here in australia it has been extended by another week to two weeks um just because we've had a few issues with getting products so um i hope you've enjoyed it um, i hope you have a great weekend and i'll catch up with you all later Bye for now.